Havoc Mikey. You probably know this game since you clicked on a video about it. It's probably my favorite game for reasons I don't really know to be honest, but what if there's something hidden in the game, just out of the player's sight, that can only be accessed with a special camera? Well, there are definitely some interesting things you can find using free cam cheats in this game. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to start in Gremlin Village, since I couldn't find anything cool in Dark Beauty Castle. One thing that I was interested about from the start was how these boats and whirlpools really work. Here you can see that once the boat enters the whirlpool, it freaks out a little and is then just teleported back to where it came from. So the game isn't actually spawning more boats, you're just seeing the same few boats over and over again. In this room where you spin the valves with steam coming off of them, there's a vent on the wall. I moved the camera inside that vent, and found a spatter chilling out by himself inside it. I don't know why he's there, but I won't judge his hangout spots. On my way through the European boat ride, I got stuck under this thing and thanks to my infinite health cheat, I got soft locked. Anyway, the next part is the clock tower boss fight. I tried to see what his arms are doing when they come out of the walls in the short intro cutscene, but the screen shake kinda messed it up. One thing that I should talk about now is the way things are loaded into view in this game. The only things that are loaded are the things that the player is able to see with the normal, uncheated camera. This is an example of what it looks like. So that means that I can have the clock tower's arms look like this, which looks cool, but doesn't really matter. I look behind his head to see if there was a record player, but there wasn't anything. I found a texture for the back of his head, though, which normally is hard to see. In Mean Street, this is something that may come as a surprise to you. Behind the roundabout with the Walt Disney statue, you can see Dark Beauty Castle. One would probably expect that the castle is just a 2D image, but it is actually a 3D model. Usually games make background elements 2D images to save on resources, but in this case the developers decided to do otherwise. I also found out right after this that the skybox follows the player at all times. This is probably something done in other games as well, but I've never seen it before so it surprised me a little. But we need to be in Oztown, so let's go there. Okay, that's more like it. Inside Mickey's house, I found a gear just outside the interior. I'm pretty sure that this is the gear that you get when Prescott destroys the telephone, and the gear moves to where it needs to be after the telephone is destroyed. Well, that was it for Oztown. That was a pretty sick transition, right? You know what else is pretty sick, is that in Mickey Junk Mountain there's this half-submerged and isolated drum over here. And this drum has a texture that's not seeable by the player on the side, that's under the thinner, and it's different from the one on top. Here's a comparison so you can see easier. Right after you exit the airlock, there's this Beetleworks factory to your left. I moved the camera inside of the factory, and found that there's some thinner spraying inside the factory, even though the player can't ever see that. Maybe the developers put them there just for the sound effects? One thing that I tried with every interior area in this game is moving the camera far away to see if I could find the area where you enter from. The only spot where I actually got results was in the room with Gilda's X. So now you know that this room is just inside the mountain, which does make sense. Remember the boats from Gremlin Village? Well, these boxes being crushed seem to act very similarly. You can see the box enter the shredder and then teleport back to where it came from. So, once again, you're just seeing the same boxes over and over again. Now we're finally done with Mickey Junk Mountain. But don't worry, it will return later. Next up is Tomorrow City. Did you know that there's a random TV pad in the air in Tomorrow Square? Well, I didn't until I found it using free camera. I tried to put a TV on it to see if it did anything, but I wasn't very successful with it. It wasn't lit up anyway, so I don't think it does anything. This one you can actually see in the game, without any cheats, it's on screen right now, do you see it? That might be too far away, let's get a little closer. There, now we can see, that it's just a white cube, sometimes cubes in 3D video games are used to activate things, so maybe this cube is tied to the activation of something in this area. Now, this one was very difficult for me to find and get footage of. Before choosing to make this video, I had only heard some people talk about this discovery before, but I had never seen actual proof that it existed. The thing I'm talking about is a projector hidden in the void in Tomorrow Square. I think I spent at least two hours looking for it. But I did not give up, and I'm glad I didn't. Because after a long time, I finally found the projector. It's directly under the one you used to leave Tomorrow Square, but a lot further down. I had finally found it, but I needed to know what happens if the player goes in. So I entered the projector, and... Yeah. The game crashed. 
Well, it's still good that I got footage for this video. Alright, that sound is getting annoying. Time to reset the way. Thank you, floating Mickey hand. Now we can go to Adventure Land. In the projector going to Adventure Land from Mean Street, I found something very peculiar. Behind the background of this area, there's an untextured top half of a projector. I don't know why it's untextured, or why it's only the top half, but it's possible that it could have been put there on accident. Remember when I said, the only spot where I actually got results was in the room with Gilda's ex? Well, I guess I was wrong, because you can find the jail's actual location in Tortuga as well. It's way over at the edge of the skybox. Now, this one isn't really a free cam discovery, but it's still very interesting, and can only be found by glitching, so I'm going to talk about it. If you glitch through the mountain behind the mansion, you can land on top of the spot where you find Beluga Billy's treasure. If you went there in your first visit to Tortuga, then Gus mentions needing a password to open the door. It seems that earlier in the game's development, you would require a password to open the door to get to Skull Island, and the developers never deleted the text triggering. But, if you go to this spot, after returning from the jungle, Gus says dead men tell no tales. Very creepy. Even though it's just a Pirates of the Caribbean reference. Let's swap back to Adventure Land instead of Tortuga for a second. This isn't Super Paper Mario, that's a different Wii game, but it was cool anyway. In Tiki Sam's Hut, I found a vase that was put there in a way where the player can never normally see it. Poor vase, it was so close to being in the game, but the developers made a mistake, and it was never seen. Real quick, let's look at the paint and thinner pumps. The way they fill up with paint or thinner is by having cylinders that raise or lower to appear like it's being filled up. So that's neat. Have you ever wondered what's inside a splu douche? Probably not, but I was wondering that. And it turns out there's nothing, so that's mildly disappointing. Now let's go fight Captain Hook. There's actually a lot of stuff here to look at, despite being a small area. Before you trigger the boss fight, some elements of the fight are stored inside the Jolly Roger. These elements include barrels, pieces of barrels, and Captain Hook himself. I found an unpainted tune crate bundle behind the boat, as well, I don't know why it's there. I also saw the crocodile chilling out below the thinner doing an animation I don't think any player has a chance to get a good look at. Wow, that was a lot to look at. Now I'll let Captain Hook pay a visit to the crocodile. Alright, let's just move on. After Venture Land, the next stop is Bog Easy. Inside the sunken boat near the spot where you enter, the player will find the Courage Badge that belongs to Lewis. However, there is actually two of these Courage Badges. The other one is outside of the area the player is in. So I guess that means Lewis only gets half of his Courage back. On the way to the Lonesome Manor, you enter a projector. In this projector level, there's a ghost banging on a door to make it open. The cool part about this is that there's a duplicate of this opening door behind the background. It's even in sync with the door that the player is supposed to see. I couldn't guess as to why it's there, so the viewer, like you could let me know why this door is there, I would like to hear about it. In Madame Leona's library, the player has to paint in some skulls that sink into the wall once they're painted in. I found it kind of interesting that the skulls just stay there forever after they sink into the wall. After I recorded that part, I did something I would later regret. I took the camera inside Madame Leona's head. I guess I can do an all-nighter, since now I'm definitely not going to sleep. Looks like it's time to beat up the Mad Doctor. But it's necessary to take the projector to get there first. In the projector level, I found two very intriguing objects behind the background. The first one I found was a lever that looks like it could be pulled. If pulling levers was a mechanic in this game, that is. The other thing you may have already noticed. It's a lonely ready ticket in the void. Looks like it may be a distant relative to the impossible coin from Super Mario 64. Now we're in the process of fighting the Mad Doctor. The only remotely cool thing I found out while I was here is that the red eye on the Beetleworks replicators are whole spheres. I'd assume this is the same for all the other ones in the game too. I told you Mickey Junk Mountain would return later. And now is later, so here it is once more. 
you already saw it in the intro of this video. In the sky there's a bunch of enemies and Oswald packed into one space. It's fairly obvious that these are all used for when Oswald beats up the bloodlings on top of the giant bottle, while the player is fighting the shadow blot. It's still one of my favorite things featured in this video, and it was also the first thing I found with free camera. During the second visit to Dark Beauty Castle, my statement about not finding anything cool here has been invalidated. In the throne room, there are two different projectors to take, but you can only choose one. I got footage for both of them, however. One of them has these clouds, which act like the boxes from Mickey Junk Mountain, and the boats from Gremlin Village. That's about it for that projector. In the second projector, the one with the dragon, there's a lot of developer cubes in here. Seriously, there's at least four, or five, that I found. I guess that they're for triggering the dragon to show up and stuff. Oh yeah, and I found a way to get this part here to spray paint, and then it refills. Oh, that's right. The blot is attacking the castle. While he's doing that, I got an opportunity to see what his whole body looks like since I figured some people would be curious about that because most of the blot is hidden by the castle spires. I tried to see what these tentacle things that come out of the wall are doing, but I'm not really sure. It looks like they shrink until they can't be seen once they're back inside the wall. Well, I'm sorry to say that there wasn't anything cool at all at the blot interior area. I hate to leave off on a boring note, but those are all the free camera discoveries I found in Epic Mickey. It took a very long time, but it was a blast making this video. I hope you enjoyed it too. I have other videos planned, so if you want to hear about those when they come out, then clicking the subscribe button down below would make my day. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and if you have anything I didn't see or got incorrect in this video, you can leave a comment and I would love to read it.